Hello and welcome. I'm the Restless Kaiser. I'm James Workshop. And together we are the Modeling for Advantage. It's been a long time, James, yes. but you still got it, mate. You Sometimes. still got it. Uh, we're here to talk cream about work the cream. Don't worry, I've still got it. You still got it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. It's slow, okay. slow. That's right. No, that's me. Great self. Uh, Warhammer Age of Sigmar new launch box, Skaven Tide. This is a heavy box. It's a very heavy box. You were struggling to lift it with one hand a minute ago. Yeah, you, yeah, had, to, you had to adjust. That could be me. <laughs> um, so, should we open it up and tell them what's in it? I think so. Right. Isn't it, it's good to be making a video again, it James. Is. It's, it's been, been a like such a long time. Uh, you've been you've been like doing university stuff as yeah. a mature student. And I can't get this box open. No, I didn't give you a blade, did <laughs> I? It's, <laughs> it's an attitude <laughs> test. It is. I've got my keys. It's keys. Let's, let's do it the way we've always done it. Right. Look, look at that. So there's no plastic wrapping. Was no. one of the first things I noticed. I don't move. know whether that's like an environment thing I or just so. a being cheap thing. It's a move. I like. And I think so. I think yeah. it's perfectly well sealed. I mean, yeah. the weight the weight of this box is significant. <laughs> There's a lot of there is some scenery in here, apparently. Yes, a little which bit. Which there isn't normally in launch boxes. Yeah, actually, you're right about that. Is there scenery? There's a oh, little bit. There's a little bit. Because okay. among other things, there's a new way to play in there here. There is. So we played very little Age of Sigma. In fact, it was a, like a learn to play Age of Sigma about two editions back <laughs> that we, we had a good little go at. Uh -huh. With the um, Monfang Banshees or something. Yeah. Wow. That's a lot of plastic. Sorry. That's a lot eh? of plastic. It's just crammed to the top. Oh, and the side, around yeah. the sides, you see the painted lot. examples of the models in the box. They certainly are. Very nice. Was there anything in the box stopper? A lovely piece of art. Piece of art. Now, yeah. I've got to say, as a box stopper, that confuses me. Why is that? Well, what's it protecting? Normally these bits are to protect things from other things mm. damaging them, mm -hmm. but it's just on top of the box. Okay. So it's protecting what, the box lid? Uh, it's protecting us from not having wonderful art in our hands the moment we open the box. Yeah. Yeah. It, also, it was that way down. Yeah, so the art's actually the bit that gets damaged. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't get it. I don't know. It's protecting yeah. us from not having brown. But I understand when they put those between the plastic yeah. and the rule book and things because the sprues are often scratch them, which they've also done. All right. Should we? What well, do we be in front of you? I think yeah, let's just yeah, take the stuff out. Loads of bases. Tons of them. Loads and loads of bases. But some separate ones. This one in a sealed bag. Those ones in a ziploc bag. Love a good ziploc bag. I just this. It like, is this unusual. one's an afterthought. <laughs> Maybe these ones also aren't easy build. Oh yeah, these ones easy build. The easy build ones have got their yeah. feet where you push them into the push fit. Yeah, we'll find out with you, audience. Mm, <laughs> land with us. All okay. right, a lot of sprues. That's massive. Right, See if we understand what they are. Is let's take start them out. separating these. So that's Stormcast. Okay. So the box is Stormcast Eternals versus Skaven. Yes, it's lovely to see both that the Stormcast Eternals. To my eye, are starting to become sort of a more homogenous force. Like the the units are making more sense together. Yeah. Um, that's game. Because there are actually loads of different armies, aren't they? There's they're a lot they're of not, They're not one army. Yeah. Yeah, there were a number of sub factions, which I think is a slightly contentious topic at the moment because some of them are being phased out with um, oh, right. the new additions. These wings are beautiful. They really are. Yeah. I'm definitely planning to buy some of those on eBay. You're putting the Skaven over there, are you? I am putting the Skaven over there for the moment. Okay. Yeah, I'm definitely planning to get some of the. You know what? I don't even know what these units are called. You're getting some of that. We will know in some a of moment. The Wii, some of the Wii guys. Out. Yeah. Uh, that's you. Because uh, at the moment we're just you. turning them out separately. Although most yeah. of these have been separate units so far. <laughs> only got one duplicate sprue. There's that scenery you were talking about. There's a scenery. Has it got a bell on it? It does. Uh, bell. 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 You need a bell, bell if you've got a rat man. You do. I'm surprised by how many of these sprues have been Stormcast Eternal so far. <laughs> because all the clan rats are really dense on yeah, that. Yeah. Right, that was all the sprues. Loads of them. We should have written the box contents. We should have read it out. Oh, let's do it now. And bits are going to go everywhere, I think. They James. Are. You want to do it now? Let's like a pro. Now. No, let's get the last of the paper oh. out and then we'll. Let me down. Okay, so here is definitely something that's protecting something meaningful. I can see through this uh, yeah, one. There's, so, there's holes in it. Uh, that's doing what it's supposed to do. Maybe that's it. a response to people saying, like, I really want to keep these pieces of art, but they're always just oh, So they put two in. <laughs> so they put one in the top and one further down. Okay. That's not yeah. a bad idea, actually. Yeah. Some more loose bases. For the bigger models. For the bigger Very models. Nice. Uh, yeah. And these, again, are punched, like, for the easy build ones. Yep. I do wonder what those unpunched ones are for. I'm starting to wonder. Mm. Bring blight and ruin or stem the tide. Those are your choices. 
And this is a QR code. code to go and learn more about the thing you just bought. Yeah. yeah. No, to win some brand new miniatures. Brand new miniatures. Look at that. Sounds good. Sounds good. Okay, we've got some other bits in here. So we're in the paper section. Paper section. Which is very dense as well. Yeah. Still most That's of the weight. That's probably where most of the weight is, <laughs> yeah. isn't it? It's in the paper. So we've got the rule book. Oh. Beautifully parceled. Presentation folio edition. Ooh. It's hardback rule book. Ooh. Very in, hard. In, in a birthday card envelope. It's, yeah. <laughs> Still with a barcode on it. <laughs> barcode on it. All right. And yep. then another box. And then another box. And then we're done with the box uh, until we want to read anything off of it. So I have no idea what this is. Um, it's all no. the other books. Let's find out. Let's find out. What do you want to do first? I think we should find out what's in these. Should we do the paper first? Should, we'll do the paper bits first because we okay. probably need to come back to these after we have a we'll mm. first glance, look at what there is, and then we'll have a bit of a read off camera yeah. and then we'll come back to it. I'll put that there for the moment. Okay, let's have a look at the rule book first. I can watch me pop the seal. You don't need to be careful. I'm not going to put it back in the envelope. You're all right. I'm a collector. <laughs> You're a collector. Okay. Oh, okay. there's two books. There's two books. Which is a core book and a spearhead book. Spearhead being the new combat patrol or vanguard, as it was previously called. Ah, right. So yes, that's a. So there's a. That's that new way to play we were talking about a little bit. Yes. Yeah. So it's right. combat patrol from 40k or vanguard, as it used to be called, and. I'm not wholly sure what the differences are, and I'm very interested in finding out. Yes, it looks like a slimmer rule book. <laughs> yeah, it is a slimmer rule book. I thought it was going to be a codex or something, or a, like a mini codex, but it's not. Spearhead is the thing. So, yeah. So, first yeah, impressions, book. core rule book. It's very pretty. It is nice. Nicely presented. Yeah, nicely presented. Very nice. Uh, do you get that photographic paper smell? Ooh. Smells yep. slightly carcinogenic. That's the one. <laughs> Do like you? That. Are you a yeah. fan? And is it like it's a little crushed in the corners already, straight out of the box? Well, it's kind of in the corner somewhere. Yeah. And then the Fire and Jade book, which I'm assuming is a narrative kind of book for the Spearhead rules, or it could just be lots and lots of cards. It looks like it's lots and lots of cards for all it the looks... different factions. Yeah, it's got other factions in there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, Chaos Warriors. Uh, so I things think definitely okay not in this box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's out. <laughs> it's out. We, we bought this commercially. <laughs> yeah. We can show everything. So, yeah. It's all so, the different forces that currently exist. I, I don't want to say all many forces that exist. Right. And how you can use them. Spearhead armies. So we're going to have, at some point, when we, when we kind of talk through the sprues and stuff, we're going to, off camera, probably yeah. have a bit of a read of this and then get back to you with oh, how we think it works. I'm quite excited about but that. But there's more information there than we were expecting, yeah. though, isn't there? It's, it's, yeah, the introduction to each of the factions, their rules, and then the cards that will be used for, for Spearhead. Yeah. Which, I'm not sure the boxes are out yet, so that could be quite interesting. No. Anyway. And then the rule book, as I said. The Age of Sigmar rule book. And which, uh, this is what, the fourth, fifth edition of Sigmar? Fourth? Yeah, although they, they tend not to say what the edition yeah. numbers are. It's just the current version. Mm -hmm. So again, nice. you show them sure in, in, in the style um, of most of their books now. Lovely sidebars. Everything's full colour on photographic paper. Mm -hmm. Loads of photographs illustrating the rules. Um, yeah. Nice examples. Love a good example. Excellent. Okay. And nice that they give you that. Because this... So the audience for this box... Mm -hmm. This box is not a getting started box. No. This is a I know I want early access to mm -hmm. new rule books and whatever's the big new yeah. refreshed army for this edition. This is the I am already invested box. That's, yeah, it's the <laughs> I'm already invested and I want these things. Yeah. Now, now maybe that you've been waiting for Skaven forever, mm. or it may be that you would really like the new refreshed Stormcast. Mm -hmm. But this is a this is usually a limited run, so yep. it's good that you get those kind of like like the full the full hardback rules. Definitely, it's not it's not an introduction thing because I don't think there are any dice in here. There may be in that other box that you were going to look at, you couldn't get open. Which one was that? Sorry, I've already opened it, haven't I? Oh no, I haven't. No, there's <laughs> another next. there's another container. <laughs> I think it's likely to contain cards and things. I think see. it's cards and things. Yeah. Okay, let's have a look at that one then. Got ahead of myself for that. All right. Because I think without things like the instructions, we're going to struggle to name these models. Nah, I'll be right. <laughs> <laughs> you have to make him up the names. I'm happy making I'm up not, the names. I'm not going to be. Uh... Ooh. So nicely presented. Certainly is. Some cards. Some cards. Some uh, more cards. Big cards. Big cards. And then your instructions on how to build everything, including the scenery on the back. 
So clearly the scenery was intended to be in this box. Cardboard. So cardboard that once you remove it, everything else will slide around. And, and then there's your game board. There's your game board. Single. Yep, so this is the Kill Team size board, but it's the one that's got into eight, folded into eight sections. Yep. Double sided. And these like the summoning circles. Which will be the objective markers for the games. Uh, yeah, probably. Probably. Yeah. All right. So these cards then. Right, we've got different types of card. I Battle am tactics. guessing that those are from the Vanguard game. They're from the Vanguard game, yep. I think, yeah. Yep, and little card holders. Now they did this with, uh, what's that eight points game? With the, with the, with the Chaos Minor factions, like the Crow Men and stuff. Oh, uh, Warcry. Warcry. That did this with cards. It gave you these little kind of pouches to mm. keep them in, but they don't have lids, <laughs> which makes them, they're fine in a presentation box. They're hopeless for carrying yeah. them around in. Yeah. Uh, go through and twist. Ah, now then, yeah. That's all twists and it's things, all twists it? that seem to align with these three different colors. Do you know mm. what these three different colors are? No. Oh, the the current factions. So Stormcast Eternal. I can't even tell that they're different colors. So this one's called a Girion twist, and it's got that green symbol. Cool. I look forward to finding out. We maybe we'll find out by reading the book. We maybe won't read enough of the book to find yeah. out. Um, but whether it's faction or kind of alignment specific, because Sigmar's got that kind of alignment mm -hmm. in the background. So these are mission cards, are they? Yeah, so it's a variety of different cards. So this will be yeah, how you set up the game. So um, I think Age of Sigmar has always done this, where you have like the map is set based on the mission, not yep. separately. Um, so yeah, you just draw one of these cards, find out what you're up to. Play the game that way. And they're like massive tarot cards in size, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, they are. But they've, got that, they've got that feel to them. They are. And they're double-sided. They seem to be from old tournament packs. Oh. So, I have no idea what these are about, and I look forward to finding out. <laughs> they've all got dates on them, and seasons on them, and things written on them in the corner. So oh, These right. might be expansions to the core missions that are in the rule book that they've decided yeah. to keep over. To give you the cards. Would be my best guess, but we'll find okay. out for sure. And then these other ones? Yeah, you've got a, um, here is your faction, your, your army your list, roster. and your roster, and your marking. And then you've got a small reference book like rules reference, how you start the game and stuff, mm -hmm. and changes from old seasons, by the looks of it, and new seasons. You've got season rules for 24 and 25, so this will be competitive related, mm -hmm. and then the generic battle tactics from each of the four Grand Alliances. Okay, interesting. Yep, I 50% know what 70% of these cards are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <woo! laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> so now we can get to the bottom of the box. We can yeah. tell you what we should have said earlier on. Excellent. Which is what this box contains, which you've probably already seen. So this box contains a 272 page Warhammer Age of Sigma core book, yeah. which uh, you can use show them, James, can yeah. you? Yeah, we're at, we've got it all out of the box now. Look at that, beautiful. Yeah. Also contains a 144 page Spearhead Fire and Jade book. Which has its own little page. It's got it, yeah, yeah. I, I, love, I love, love that. I love that. A little bit of ribbon in there. Yeah. It has a 36 card Spearhead deck. Be the one you have. Which was, we'll assume is this. Yeah, I don't want to put that there. It has uh, 17 General's Handbook cards. That'll be the ones I just had. Right, as well, we should have read this before. Yep. It has four terrain features. Is that terrain? That's probably the terrain. <laughs> there is a sprue of terrain. Yeah. <laughs> uh, which presumably makes four different things. It also contains 74 miniatures. Ooh. There is a Lord Vigilant on Griff Stalker. That's the big boy. There is a Lord Terminos. Cool. There is a Lord Veritant. I'm so glad I know the difference between all these There's things. a Knight Questor. Okay. Reclusians, nice. Prosecutors cool. and liberators. I know the last three. <laughs> prosecutors and liberators we had before. They were, yeah, they were in the Age of Sigmar first edition release box. They were like, here are the here are the Stormcast Eternals. These are the units that they're going to use. I feel I've had Hammer Bros you in Underworlds. Yeah, you have. I think so. I had them yeah. in Underworlds, but they're they're you know slimmed down, leaned up. 
They've got they slightly not, thinner armour and weird faces that they look They stop like, skipping the leg days. Yeah, they look like uh, the man in the Iron Mask now for some reason. They do! Really know we're going to come to that. <laughs> um, so, uh, Skavens, Kill Kill. We have a Claw Lord on a Gnaw Beast. Hell yeah. If you're not sure what he does, the beast is a beast that yes. gnaws. Um, it's good. And the Lord Claws as well. Which is Lord does the Cloin, the beast does the Noin. So clearly defined roles, I like Thank that. You. It's very management. Not Lord Veritant. Uh, the Grey Seer. Yep. He's a wizard, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, warlock Engineer. Is that Warlock or Warp Lock? It's Warlock. It's Warlock, but it has a warlock. Warp Lock weapon. Uh, right. Not to confuse anyone. <laughs> Not to be confused anyone. <laughs> what, that's just another type of wizard. Oh, uh, it's an engineer. It's an engineer. It's got a gun. It's got a gun. <laughs> Rattling Warp Blaster. Cool. That's the big cannony thing, yes, it is. presumably. Uh, Rat Ogres. Nice. Rat and Ogres. Thank you very much. Ogors, not yeah, ogres. No, ogors, because it's in universe. Warp block Gisales. I love that. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that that's a nice model. <laughs> um, and clan rats. I want to say clan rats. There's a lot of clan rats in here. <laughs> it takes up such a small amount of the text on the Yeah, it's just and clan rats. <laughs> 40 of them, I believe. <laughs> yeah. um, well, we had a quick count. Uh, so that, that's the stuff in there. Look, this is... I can't remember how much it cost it, but after discount from the third party retailer, it, it was oh, it was over 100 but not much. Mm. There's, by Warhammer standards, you're paying a little bit over, like £1.20, £1.30 a figure. Some of these are big pieces, some mm. of these are clan rats. But, you know, the rule book itself and normally goes to other bits. Ignoring the fact that you've got some very pretty full-colour hardback books. <laughs> now... By anybody else's standards, this is expensive. Yeah. But by what you know, but I, I don't think you'd get more than this for this money from other companies. No. But by Games Workshop standards, it's very good, provided you want both of the armies, and also that you want a rulebook, because a lot of other games would just give you a digital one. <laughs> well, they tend to be free PDFs now. The yeah. basic rules. You still end up needing like because all the real rules are in your codex and things like yeah. that, aren't they? Which is interesting because. Sorry to go on an aside. I do love a good you side. You did segue away. Um, the old 6th uh, and 7th and earlier box sets came mm. with a miniaturised paperback, like yeah. uh, Bolt Action does, the mm. miniaturised paperback version. They seem to have intentionally moved away from that. Yeah. Like, we, if you want a rule book, you get the big hardback rule book. And I'm not confident why that is. No, Pretty no, much I the think only that's reason. the distinction between the launch box and the starter boxes. No, there's still no paperback version. There's only ever a hardback version. You either get it or you don't. I've not seen a miniature paperback version of a rule book for a long time. I think in the current 40k long, uh, bigger one, there is one. The, the reason they don't press, press about putting the paperback mm. one in it is because it's free online. Is it slimmed down? Or the what? one in the in the uh, yeah. in the whatever it's called, the extremist or whatever, the ultimate yeah, starter set. Very very slim. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'd be interested in seeing because that. Anyway. what they've done is they've stripped everything out of the yeah. core rules and put them into special rules. Mm. So, not and for what that means edition. is that the core rules are not okay. nearly as big as they used to be. Okay. I think tenth edition has a lot more generic special rules now than previous editions have done. So. Yes, but they're not printed in the main rule book. They're still printed oh, in the army okay. book. In your army book, it says Deep Strike, and in my army book, it says Deep Strike, but Deep Strike isn't in the rule book. Oh, interesting. Okay. Whereas you okay. go back to like 7th, <laughs> and there was a massive list of yeah. keywords of what oh, they all did, right? I've just played like 50 games of 10th, I don't know. And maybe, who knows, <laughs> maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. And it's, it's a mighty segue. Should we have a look at the plastic in reference to the instructions so that we yes. know what it is that we're talking about? Okie dokie. Because um, there's a lot of plastic to talk about here. Hopefully when I make this video, I will find a picture from Games Workshop of a finished what version of what mm. we're talking about. So you can have a look at it. So, uh, there's measuring sticks. Sorry. There's measuring sticks on the scenery. They're on the sprue. It's got little rats and it's got little skulls. Oh, I've seen this. That's cool. It's not just that it's a measuring stick. It's hinged, James. You're kidding. Oh, I don't think it's, it's hinged. It pops on and off. So you've got your kind of sit eight, yeah. eight inches and your three inches or whatever those measurements are. Yeah, and they um, hook together. And they hook together to provide you with a nine inch or whatever. Weird. Oh, Does it tell you what the actual measurement is? Three inch. and six. Six and three, yeah. Six and three, yeah. Cool. I've never seen that before. <laughs> That's no. very fun. But okay. it is decorated with, with rats. Right. right. We're going to start with the... The Lord Vigilant on Griff Stalker. I'm going to go with this. That is correct. Is it just the one sprue? At one point. It would be, uh, quite often with the release boxes, as I'm sure you've noticed, like you'll see what's going to be released later. <laughs> because they'll have like 
uh, a sprue that's made up of 15 different characters yeah. on one sprue. Yes. Which I can't actually see here. Yeah, now this one. Is it? Is that not just the new unit of people that look like characters? Whatever, oh, possibly. Whatever they're called. Possibly. You got the back of the box. Well, there's often in here, like you said, there's something that's unique, and then there's yeah. other things that are just the new units, bro, right? Reclusions. 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 Maybe. They're just a unit that look like characters. Right. Okay. So we're talking about what was this guy called again? The guy with the, the guy on the Griffin. Lord the Vigilant on Griff Stalker. Lord Vigilant. That just means top boss dude. I guess. Griff Stalker. <laughs> yeah. They had Griff Stalkers before. They did. They didn't look like this. They didn't. No, they're. Um, that's what I was saying, yeah. I, I think they've moved they've moved away from things looking like eagles, which mm -hmm. I guess is just because of the relationship with Warhammer 40k. Like, eagle means Imperium. But also Sigma. Yes. Doesn't Sigma have a big eagle device? I don't remember. I thought he was always the hammer and the meteor. Uh. Anyway. Um, but they've moved more towards sort of a Corvid-looking thing now. Right. Um, which I am hugely in preference of, um, partly because uh, things looking like eagles is just a normal thing. Like, it makes them look a little bit generic to me. Right. Whereas making something look a bit more like a crow is both like, you're looking at their darker side because it's a crow. They, and they don't... It's a bit edgy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm less happy about oh, it. Oh, okay. Say. I like, well, well, if they... If they're trying to present themselves as kind of angelic, mm. these look more chaos <laughs> yeah. than the angelic. I think it no. might be representative of the fluff because they are sort oh, of... Oh, I don't doubt it. They're moving more towards the, like, we're in proper war footing. This isn't about being brave anymore. This is about not losing. Right. <laughs> yes. So. Yes. Um, and they definitely have a very distinct um, visual from what they had before. Mm. They do not look like space marines in robes. No. <laughs> no. Um, they... I mean, they do a bit. They do. Because they're heavily armoured. Yeah. Yeah, they're still dudes in full plate armour. Who yeah. are quite tall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and not, not entirely human. Mm -hmm. But as a model, I mean, just looking at this, we're not going to have time to build all of these no. uh, in, the, in the time frame which we would want to put the video out. But this is a push fit model. They you all can are. See, yeah. You can see the, the, the wells in them. Well, sometimes they're, combi they're, mm. they're part of one... And part of another, depending on how they're going to be released later. It, it, it? does say no glue required right on the no front, so they must required. all be pushed fit. Right, so should we tackle that question? Yeah. When it says no glue required, it lies. It says no, no glue, glue required, required. <laughs> glue definitely yeah. advised, unless you like big gaps in your model. Yeah. Depends on what you're going to If you just want to push these models together and push them around and roll some dice and you're happy with that, that's fine, and that will work. Mm. Um, and if you're like 12, that might be what you go for. Yeah. But it, with the push fit models, there is the very, very real risk of gaps all over the place. Huge ones. And so forth. Um, generally speaking, as well, because they rely on tension, mm -hmm. once you push them in, you're going to find it hard to get them out. Even if they're in the wrong position. <laughs> Even if they're in the wrong position. <laughs> yeah. So I would generally look to, and not so much dry fit, because dry fit would imply you did push them together. Mm. You look at how they fit together in a lineup of mm. the pins, look where you could glue that piece on, yep. then cut the pins off and glue it on. <laughs> would be my, it okay. is my method with that. Um, I make Just sure the there's clippers. plenty of glue on the pin so that it's suitably lubricated for everything to slip together. But for everything to I've slip not together. had anything, uh, any problems with that so far. Yeah. I just sometimes find that you're like, you press really hard mm. and it still isn't together. Mm. Mm. Um, and I think sometimes that's because the um, if you're putting glue into these holes, that's consuming some of the space. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, and you end up with um, uh, pressure locks as well. Like yeah, there's air in the gap that you can't quite put yeah. out. Yeah, yeah, and you can't get it out again to reset it. Uh, but this this model is in surprisingly. It's not in too many pieces. I mean, you've got two huge, mm. very structural pieces. So anyway, that's him. He looks very nice. He goes on one of these nice big bases. Real centerpiece of a model. Biggest action. That might be the big gun, though. Yeah. Okay. Next we have... That's him. The Lord Veritant. It is one of the character models, but it has a sword and a stick. A sword and a stick. And uh, do you know which of the sprues he comes from? Because it'll have a sprue number on it. No. Two to three? Two. And three is a little doggo. Is it this one? It's this one. So this is a... This might be the characters that are unique to this box then. Because these are the two. One is a Skaven, one is a Stormcast, and they're both on the same sprue. Which means these either get sold as a pair <laughs> when they get sold uh, together. So I think they're going to be the champions in the starter boxes. Okay. That That's how they then. often do it. It's a dual yep. sprue. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's yours. <laughs> so that's the Lord Veriton. So the Lord Veriton is a dude with a sword and a stick. Oh, and we, so the doggy is back. Yeah. With the original Griffhound. Stormcats, they have those Griffhounds. Yeah. But again, they they don't look, they're not got like beaky no, heads. they're a bit thinner and a bit crowier. Yeah. 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 Again, a look I quite like. It's quite similar, but if you, um, I'll put a picture up in a bit or I'll just do that, whatever works. But it's quite, it's quite shaggy in comparison to the old yes. ones as well. Like they're, they're not perfectly clean up and down. No, no. No. Um, same as a lot of the characters. They don't look like the dogs that angels would have. No, they don't, no. Whereas the other ones did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So this is, an, this is a good model of showing you one of the things that you're getting out of these more modern um, cat designs, mm -hmm. where they're, they're obviously doing things digitally, where you've got pieces that punch through other pieces to layer up. Mm. So this guy's cloak, so you have the back of his robes, and you've got a bit of a cloak, and you get a bit more of it here. Mm. And it's it's giving depth yeah. to to folds in the cloak, which you just didn't see until quite recently yeah. because of their solid pieces. Because they're solid pieces, mm. yeah. You know, and to, to do something like that in metal is quite difficult. Uh, probably impossible because you've got a spin cast of like three different directions. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so the blindfold thing, mm. you you know you know where that comes from. Not a clue. But the the stormcast themselves then like Thousand Sons or whatever, mm. they're just like spirits or souls or whatever trapped in armour. I think it moved on. Because they've um, got faces now. And I haven't really played Age of Sigma since first edition. So right. <laughs> I haven't kept up with the fluff except from the bits that I like. Yeah. But then definitely when we say like, like her face like bandaged up, a mm. lot less angelic, angelic, looks a lot more penitent. Mm, definitely. She's got definitely a lot of fire going yeah, on. Yeah. She's got a crow looking Spikes. dog. Big old Dead skull on the shoulder. I feel it's looking a bit like a chaos cult to me, to be honest. Yeah, but that's fine, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, still on with character type dudes. Then what we got next? Lord Terminos. Lord Terminos. Who looks like the Sanguinor. Who looks uh, like a Sanguinor. Who looks a lot like a Sanguinor <laughs> if you paint him gold. Yeah. Is he going to be on this sprue? Yeah. No he's, no, got, he's got really... Is he just the hero of... He might have another well unit. Have you got the big axe? You got the big axe. There it is, baby. The twin big tail axe, comet. baby. Oh, he's leaning on his axe. He's like, yeah. oh, you never put you never put your weapon barrel down. Honestly, you, you need to tell this guy. Won. I don't know. Maybe it's magic metal. Magic, it magic metal. So these have got like, if you ever seen like original Doctor Who, the Time Lords when he went, whenever hmm. he went back to Gallifrey, they had these like massive collars uh -huh. behind them. Um, did Ming the Merciless have something like that in the real Flash Gordon, maybe? He's in a few places, but these guys are definitely rocking that look. I've seen more minutes of Flesh Gordon than Flesh Gordon. I have no idea. <laughs> Flesh Gordon, not for children. No, of course um, not. But these guys have got those kind of, that kind of massive collar. Yeah. That almost, it's almost a hood, but it doesn't go over them. The but this is... Reclusians do as well. Reclusians they, they, that'd be the leader of them, won't it? very spiky. Yeah, definitely. Spike. Now, technically, I think they're like flames and things or whatever. They're not quite spikes. I think they're like they're like lightnings. Or My whatever. understanding of the Reclusians mm. is that they are pretty much being pulled out of retirement for the sake of this. So, okay. like, they've already finished their career. They've, their souls have been recycled so many times. They've started going a bit weird. And right. That, but they're they're hugely experienced soldiers. Mm -hmm. So the models that we have represented here are basically like. Um, their honor gear, like they've been, right. they've been done up over the years a bit, and like they've been through a few marches, and like right. they've started picking up extra accessories as they've been right, through things. right, that, that so, veteran thing. They're, going, they're a bit custom, they're yeah, a bit, they're a bit bespoke. So yeah, yeah. all of them are um, very important historic soldiers who probably shouldn't be fighting anymore, right? But they're very, very good at it. Right. However, when they die and they get recycled, you don't know if they're going to come back. Oh, you right. are, you are there is an end point. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the Lord Terminos, I'm interested how you can be a leader of a group of people <laughs> who are already on the brink of retirement. Who are all probably... Well, no, because I guess there are there are no shortage of heroes who are not leaders. Mm, I guess. Uh, he's, the, he, he's the leader of a band of heroes, and that is the story of many movies. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah. He's very true. Um, Except normally it's not red. No, it's not red. Red is like all of the spies who've retired and then they come back and it's... Yeah. Anyway. Night Questors next. The Night Questors. Who is, uh, that's a name I recognise. I think Night Questor was in one of the... It was in Silver Tower. 
if I remember correctly. So he's on a sprue with something else. They which are. Again, he's going to be on this sprue somewhere, maybe. I think. I think this is no, our mixed in the hero sprue. Yeah. yeah. So Mike, Mike Quistor, uh, it was he, he's a rookie. Is he a trainee? It's a good guess. Yeah, cool. <laughs> um, when we get to look at the rules later, uh, some of these single figures that are attached to these units look like they might be markers or tokens mm. rather than have a stat profile. Can we call it by its Spanish name, which is Caballero Hidalgo? I mean, if that makes you happy, oh, James, was, I would find that, it difficult to say those words. That character is called Hidalgo now. Oh, right, Hidalgo. <laughs> okay. I love it. Cool. Yeah. Okay, next we have Reclusians. You're already on the right sprue. Um, they're, all, they're all here. They yeah. look like the other guy. They do. Who was the Recruzian <laughs> chief. It's, yeah. The, I think Stormcast Eternal are already um, joked about a little bit because of how many characters they have. Yeah. I think they've made a unit of characters. <laughs> you now lead with a character and a character. But <laughs> what's great about these models is all the fabric. Oh, they're fantastic. And, yeah. the, and, and I think one of the reasons why it's Stormcast, they've done, with the Stormcast range, they're like, what paints up really well mm. and looks great is a load of play armor and some fabric. And some fabric, yeah. Very contrasty, very ha yeah. easy to see from a very distance. Very easy to work with, like speed yeah. paints work so well on fabric, mm -hmm. you know, metallics, pretty much. I mean, even when you just spray Sigma <laughs> yeah. gold, they look amazing. They look all right. <laughs> yeah. You know, just spray them gold and they look all right. Mm. And then as soon as you start putting those accents on with the cloaks and things, they, and, they, and these ones, what are they called? Reclusians. Reclusians, yeah. There's loads of fabric on these There's guys. loads of details. Loads, loads and loads of fabric. Chains, all sorts. Yeah. So compared to a lot of other Domcast, these might be a bit more involved painting because they've got a lot more kind of filigree type detail. But if you don't paint it, it'll still look mostly <laughs> fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you just have it as, as a yeah. colour, like, yeah, yeah the, your metallic or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Still going to look great. Okay. And, 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 I can't deny. There's a lot of there's a lot of things you can say about a Games Workshop mm. and say oh, it's evil company or whatever. But their newer this this is like their bespoke. This is our idea of a new army. Mm. The Stormcast thing, ten years old now maybe, and they do look fantastic. They do. They really do. They really do look great. Yeah. I'm not that engaged by the law, but I think I just as standalone models, mm. they look great. This is you know, like as a character I want to play in D and D. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. my gosh, look know. like that. Which is why they did Silver Tower. Silver Tower is is like mm. a, a dungeon fighter, yeah. and they always knew that they were going to have one of these guys. <laughs> yeah. All right. We have Memorians, which is fellas. Just some little fellas. Just some, just some wee chaps. Just they're all, some... I think they're also going to be on this bro. Yeah, they probably somewhere. Are. There's half of one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, so these are like you know, priests or adepts mm -hmm. or just hangers on. As far as I know, up to this point, they've not had any humans in Stormcast Eternal meaningfully. So what I'm guessing these are because there's one for the the Lord Terminos, and then there's one for uh, sorry, two of them for the Reclusians. Mm. Um, it might be three for the Reclusians, is that they're sort of caretakers for the older warriors. Oh, right. <laughs> I don't know how correct that is. But you don't mean the, attendance. That's the vibe just, I'm like, getting. Get me my wine. You yeah. think they might be like, uh, find me my pills. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think when they start getting into battle, they sort of push them in the right direction right, <laughs> towards right. the enemy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're still very capable of fighting, but sometimes yeah. they forget I'm actually who. a guide dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But obviously, they've all got sensors okay. and standards and things. There'll be an official answer to this, but I quite like the idea that they are, in fact, guide dogs. I don't care. Right. <laughs> so then, then we've got um, the Brian Blessed models. We do. Prosecutors. The Hawkmen, surely. I don't think Prosecutors is correct. Okay, don't worry. Or the Blessed Brigade, as I suspect we're the going blessed, to call them. The, the Blessed Brigade. <laughs> Brian Blessed! <laughs> okay. uh, I absolutely love these models. Is it because they're Hawkmen? It's not because they're Hawkmen. It's because they've managed to do some extremely dynamic models. Well, I mm. think they've done the rings, the wings really right for the Force. Mm -hmm. It's really easy to get wings wrong and just make them look like wings. Whereas in this, there's like a, a there's a whole magical feel to it, and they've really nailed all the these look. extended bits. Yeah, I'm just wondering whether these are they're not identical. Oh, there's there's three very separate models. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The three very... I, I don't think they're that different, <laughs> but they're not... 
They're all in different but poses. They're yeah. They're in two. The yeah. There's male one, female one. Like they're all quite yeah. different. Um, and so you set this. This presumably your sergeant model comes with a champion. trident. Yeah. Option for a trident. 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 Yeah. Uh, two shield designs. Should be three. Two. So again, I think it's whether you've got your sergeant or not. Gotcha. This is going to be a little bit different. Champion, as you say, was the, very cool. Right? But for the for the sound again. The wings are cast in a single piece for mm. each wing. Mm -hmm. They are very strongly key. Look at the they size really of yeah. that and key tongue. Um, that even the sprue's bowed. Like they've had to adapt the shape of the rectangular sprue in order to get them onto the sprue properly. Yeah. So this is the this is that thing again about uh, that morning. You see, look, it's it's raised here, and this isn't doing anything other than protecting it, mm. which I think is which is really good. That raising the in, lots of people have bits of sprue that stick out, mm -hmm. like pieces that stick out from the sprue. But this is quite it seems quite new to me. Yeah. We're going to raise the lip so it protects the piece. They're extremely avoidant of having um, three entry points for uh, injection molding as well. They've only ever done it uh, sorry three part molds. It's always two part molds. Yeah. You can do three part molds, and they've done it once, which was the bane blade. <laughs> right, <laughs> but I. Even with a mold that size, that's pretty equivalent to the Bane Blade <laughs> size mold at this point. And they've mm -hmm. somehow managed to do it with two points. So it's not a three part mold, which is very cool. Good okay. job, then. Um, and the models, like you said, they look beautiful. You have a plan for these, James, don't uh, you? I'm going to. So these ones I don't have a plan for. These are going to be painted and just played. Okay. Um, I will 100% be using these as some custodians. <laughs> You're gonna use I think the custodians. models are close enough, and mm -hmm. the Venetari custodians uh, are jump pack troops. And I substantially prefer these models to the official ones. Right. We do need to talk about the tactical rock here. Because these yes. are not on flight stands. They're not. Um, um, my understanding of Age of Sigmar is, unlike 40k, everything's measured base to base. So the yeah. fact that they're massive models just doesn't really matter that much. Mm -hmm. um, so but they're all standing on rocks. Yeah. To show that they're flying. To show that they're flying. It's the current way of Games Workshop showing things are flying. As opposed to a flight stand. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> I hate flight stands. I'm really not into them. Right. <laughs> Any time that they avoid having a flight stand, I prefer it. Even if that does mean that everyone's got their own personal. If my like, like this one is foot is stroking the rock. It is. It's a nice. little, It's a bit caressing. Know, caressing. Slightly, like somewhat sensual. Yeah. Um, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not such a fan. Are you not? I really like no. it. No. Um. What is your exception to it? Well, it's, the fact, it's like any bit of scenery on a base of a model, as it looks great static, but they're just dragging these rocks around the battlefield mm. with them everywhere so they can stand next to them. Yeah, it does also sort of force your hand on the type of scenery that you can have as a base, like what you can do with that base. I do understand. Um, mm. But I would prefer it to a flying base on basically every occasion. So flying bases are something else to break, and they look, they look incongruent, like you've got a piece of plastic. <laughs> that you'll never be able to do anything with that's just a clear bit of plastic with a bubble in it. You can paint it if you like. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I suppose I'm suspending disbelief. I know that that's a flight stand. Mm. Yeah. But I, which isn't supposed to be there. Yeah. That's a rock that is supposed to be there. Yeah, I And they're all hopping around yeah. from, from pillar to pillar across mm. this battlefield. But it, 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 look, different people are different it is, things. Yeah. But it's worth noting the fact that they are all standing on pillars or leaping off pillars. And that you might uh, or might not like that. And you might or might not like that. <laughs> but, well, yeah, yeah. Because they, they could be leaping from the ground. Yeah. You get the height by them leaping you from do. the pillar. Um, I don't know if it's still a thing. Games Workshop used to have a philosophy where you should be able to tell what a model is from like three feet away behind the model. Mm -hmm. So I think if they've just got some people who are stood on the floor, that limits the number of options that you have for how many different models you can have. Um, they've definitely moved Wings away from Wings are it. nearly four inches long. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you're right. You're right. I get it. Um, All right. Well, I'm overthinking this thing. They've moved away from it a little bit recently because there was the Canon S with Jetpack. Mm -hmm. um, who just looks like every other model in the unit. Right. Like, I'm this not is sure a how, sister of battle. Yeah, I'm not sure how well that model's going to um, sell because it looks exactly like every other model that it could be in a unit with. They do so have a regimental it. haircut, though, which yeah. doesn't help with the sisters. No, but it also has no extra accessorizing. It right. just looks like a sister with a jetpack. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah, okay. they didn't. They didn't do what they normally do. Right. Okay. Uh, Finally, so the, liberators. So, for those of you that have liberators, these are redone. They are. The 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 old ones are presumably going to be discontinued. These again, they look a lot less angelic. They do. They, they, what did you say before? The man in the iron mask. Man in the iron mask, because they got that rib down there. Yes. Yeah, so they don't look like. I don't know what you would call it. Like kind of almost like um. Like you would envisage some kind of avatar of a mm. god might look like with that, you know, that half halo and the gold gold head, mm -hmm. but still presumably looking quite proportioned and supposed to impress yeah. majesty yeah these things look look a bit more serious they look more like someone's just like you say a man in the iron mask mm. I, I think it's a, a move towards looking. the army not representing that sort of angelic mm. feel anymore i think um, humans are used to look up to the stormcasters like the people who would defend them while they were in a bad spot yeah whereas i think humans are now far more capable of defending themselves than they were when the world broke to pieces because these the are the survivors passed. yeah so you've now got the free people or whatever the new army that just released mm. not long ago is and they look pretty capable of looking after themselves so now the stormcast are like fighting where the fighting's thickest mm -hmm. i think the stormcast feel in the fluff to have moved away from being space marines and moved towards being custodies like they are okay. the, they are the few hundred best fighters that you will ever possibly have right and that they will yeah, travel they from realm to realm fighting the good fight kind of thing yeah and the humans can kind of do their own jam now cool i, I like the new designs i prefer the new liberators to the old ones yeah um, i distinctly dislike the, the nose thing i think that's a, a big deci design decision that they made to that they decided on um that i sorry I, i'm not big sigma what do you mean the nose thing these models the, the are strip noses. that they've got the the uh, iron mask strip that they've got down the front so the uh, where uh, where's a picture of it is this something that the new ones have yeah so if you see that strip of metal that's running down the middle of their face yeah that isn't on the old ones they used to have like the the almost um uh, Blood Angel death mask thing going on. Yeah. Whereas now it looks like a helmet. Right. Um, it, and but I think it's still a full were, face covering. I think they were actually death masks before. Like, this is a representative of the person who's inside it because each piece of armor is made individually for each soul. Right. Whereas now they look generic <laughs> a right. lot more. Right. Um, but they definitely look meaner. They do definitely look meaner. I think part of that is that they've slimmed down, leaned up. Like they, right. They're not, they're not as roided up as yeah, they were. Yeah, well, their, their legs certainly aren't as wide as they used to. <laughs> there was a lot of very wide posing. There was a lot of very, very like, I can do the yeah. splits look. Yeah. yeah. Where they don't look like they're trying to be heroic anymore. They look like they're trying to win a fight. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the, the posing is very different. Yeah. And so forth. But everything that we've seen so far, it is in that kind of current Games Workshop style. It is, mono, it is monopose. Mm -hmm. There are a very small number of options, which is usually a weapon swap on a sergeant type model. A lot of unique characters. I think monopose is great as long as you keep pumping out more versions of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, is the thing. It's when you have a second unit of the same 10 poses is when it's a problem. Mm. And they, they've had a little bit of an issue with the monopose models, to me, where mm -hmm. they'll release a monopose model in a box set and then they won't release that again for an extremely long time. So the only way that you can get that model is in the box set. You, and you have to buy the big box set to get yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, that. Uh, frankly, I mean, it's not it's not what you want to hear, but if you do want the contents of this box, you probably do need to buy it. I hope you can still because, get it. <laughs> and the, yeah, because um, the Sigma ones tend to last a bit longer. Mm. The Warhammer ones tend to sell out very quickly, the 40K ones. Yeah. But th there is likely to be things in here that won't come. But I'm not trying to persuade you to buy it. I mm. just like, that's my own bitter experience, <laughs> that, unfortunately. Yeah. And we all wish that they wouldn't do it. It's kind of... It's a little bit unscrewed. In this slot, it looks like the Grey Seer and the Warlock, Warlock Engineer and in Seer. Because they're the ones that are on there, sprue together. In the, the, the single ones? Yeah, in the single ones. And in that one, it'll be the... I think they Lord will Veriton. come in all the starter boxes. Um, the twin sprue thing. Yeah, when it's likely. been designed as not, a twin sprue. The characters often don't come back that way, though, do they? The one of... No, in the previous couple of editions, mm -hmm. there's been some characters in the launch box that don't come. Right. But there's been a twin sprue, mm -hmm. which has been made like one of each because they're going to put it in all of those other boxes. Okay, okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, that does make sense. I'm, I guess in this that one... Was, so in the last Warhammer one, that you got the Terminator captain, you didn't get the librarian. Okay. 
Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess in this one, that's probably the Lord Veritant and Reclusians are going to get their own separate boxes because they're all together on one sprue for some yes. reason. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, let's move on. Yes, yes, to the Batman. So, kill, kill. Claw Lord on Gnaw Beast. He claws, it gnaws. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. They're completely descriptive. It, completely descriptive. I, yeah, going through the uh, Stormcast Eternals, none of the names are descriptive of any of the things that they no, do. I'm whereas looking this, forward to the Skaven. Like, 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 the, uh, like the last set that we were with, the Merv yep. knobs and so forth, it's like, these are stabbers. <laughs> Whatever. Okay. So you've got a Claw Lord on an beast. It's a big rat with a rat on it. It's a big, mangy-looking rat. It's really mangy-looking. Mm. So I, I love Skaven, because I love... They've got... They've got the viciousness of goblins about them now. They're like, kill, kill, kill. They're the underdog thing. Mm -hmm. But they don't have the fun. <laughs> they're just mean. They're just nasty. If you read some of the books and stuff, they're, they are quite fun. They're not the goblin scenes. fun. They're not goblin fun, but they're like... Every the single one of them is a stereotypical backstabbing politician. <laughs> right. And you get to have some fun with watching them all poke each right. other. But yeah, big rat with a big spear sat on top of a big rat. Yep. Right, nothing um, to say about that. Nothing to say about that. Uh, it's, it's, <laughs> it's awesome. There's, there's your hero, there's your leader. Yep. Fine. Um, it is on a sculpted base, mm -hmm. uh, which is nice to see. With the Skaven, they're going to bring their murk with them. They're going to bring their, <laughs> their, their their dripping with goo. Uh, so Skaven in Stormcast, yep. uh, in, in, in Sigma, mm -hmm. then they're still all about the Warpstone. They are. They're Chaos now. Right. But they huff Warpstone together. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're still... It's not in the good Watch. green stuff. Yeah, oh, that's they still love that. Chew, cool. Chewing down. And that's some. what they do instead of magic, is half warp stone. I think it's still the same thing, yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah. cool. Uh, I, everyone gets to do magic in Age of Sigma, though. Even the corn people get to do Even some the magic. Dwarves. Everybody gets to do some magic, because it's not about um, them actually doing magic. It's about like the magic whirling Empyrean that exists around the universe. Magic whirling Empyrean. Yeah. You heard it here first, guys. That's how it works. Gracie. Grey Seer. Which is the one that so he's, on the a, he's, a, he's a regular wizard type. Or is that the Indian Seer? Or is it both? Oh, it's both. Is it both? It's the Grey, she Grey Seer and the Warlock Engineer, who yeah. I really want to call a Warplock Engine Seer, but let's yeah, go. Yeah, that. absolutely. So again, you've got this, like, the, you know, the sprue. Uh, what do we call it? Frame. The frame yeah. that it sits in has been modified uh, to protect the pieces where they're ele elevated mm. around. It's a lovely model. Uh, the one on the big bell. Yeah, very dynamic. Yeah. Uh, Graciers always look very distinctive because they've got the big horns going on. Yeah. They've got the big staff going on. But yeah. this, this is a... It makes for a very good um, silhouette, is what I'm thinking. Like, it, it's really warlock. It's almost quite old-fashioned in that mm. the model is, like, side-on. Oh, almost like it's nice. <laughs> so the slot of yeah. base at, at, that, at that angle. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And again, he's got a... He, he, yeah, because he's stood on this base. big broken bell. Mm -hmm. A bit of a bell. Skaven, they love a bell. They do. And then the other guy, the Warlock Engineer. Warlock Engineer. The Warlock Engineer. Yep. But he's got a warp pistol. Has he's he? got a rifle. He's got a he's got rifle. A straight, straight up rifle. He's going to shoot. Oh, yeah, he's got a massive rifle, rifle. now. Big old rifle. Right? Taller than the model. <laughs> big rifle. Uh, but also sculpted base, because he's got a big uh, sea mine looking thing under his other foot. Oh, that's what that is. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Very fun. Cool. You will have seen pictures that I've taken off their website. Certainly will. Nice. We've got both of them on this brew, which I don't know. Does that mean it will or won't come in the start sets? I'm, yeah, I'm, maybe it might come. This was the, the one. Big rat. Yeah. This is no. This is what you cut off the twin sprue, isn't it? Was, it? Yeah. So I think this you're likely to get mm -hmm. the big rat's probably the unique one. Yeah. All right. A couple of characters. Three characters. Well, the, the big rat comes in the spearhead. Yeah. The big rat is the spearhead. Yeah. Start now. Maybe we'll see them all then. Who knows? Who knows? Rattling right. Warp Blaster. Rat rattling Warp Blaster. That's the big cannon. Big cannon. Big cannon. Which looks amazing. It does look amazing. I'll be honest. And it's got a lot of crew. It does have a lot of crew. Yeah, when I was saying earlier that you've got like 70 models to paint or something, I didn't include you didn't that count like for five on the one base the, Yeah, five crew figures on this one. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, there are. I'm counting five. One, two, three, four, five. Do, you know? Yeah, probably is five. The, yeah. Five, Amazing. including the driver. Cool. I do like that they just push the thing along like a wheelchair. That's pretty great. Is it going to technology <laughs> to fire lightning at you uh, or whatever it is? But we still have to push it, obviously. I imagine that the warp lock engine that you'd have to build for this, the 
Um, the Warpstone engine. Warpstone engine would probably be more expensive than just having four rats push it. Yeah, true. <laughs> like true. Disposable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and there, and and I like the fact that how weedy these look compared mm. to the other rat. These are these are the ones. Yeah. These are rattling slaves, presumably. They're pretty much or rattling slaves. Yeah. Rattlings. And they look big for rattlings. Not rattlings. Uh, yeah, just scaven slaves. Just scaven slaves. Scaven slaves. All one go. word. Okay. Uh, not too many pieces for the gun. Mm. Really dynamic. Um, the crew figures. If you were tempted to to you're thinking I might use it for something else. It looks like they actually look at the back of them, they actually plug into the weapon. Yeah. They're part of holding it in position and probably not very usable in a, in another way. Same thing. In another format. Uh yeah. Almost definitely. I think yeah. you could you could put it together without them, but then they wouldn't be much use. But then they're of no use. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. Then we have... That's those. Rat Ogors. Rat Ogors. Ogors um, being the word that Games Workshop used to try and be proprietary about it. I am very interested in the way that these models look, because looking at them in the instructions here, they look very old-fashioned. They look very old-fashioned. Yeah, they don't... So the old uh, Rat Ogre sprue hmm. is... 12 years old at least now. It's ancient uh -huh. as far as Warhammer is concerned. It's from yeah. Warhammer Fantasy. 12 years is quite modern for some companies. Yeah. They look exactly the same. <laughs> oh, right. Okay. <laughs> There's almost no change. They've even got the weird giant hands and things. Like, they they don't look like a meaningful improvement on the old model to me. Okay. Would be my comment. So, I mean, the big change is their push fit. Yes. Um, they're, in, they're in quite a few pieces, and this is the thing about them yeah. being a bigger model. Done, done this way. There already is a very cool push fit Rat Ogre. Yeah. A few of them from the Island of Blood box set, which is like the seventh edition starter set. That's how okay. that far back we're going. Okay. I don't think these look better than those ones. You don't think they look better? No. All right. Now, um, Rat Ogres, because um, these are definitely not multipos, multi you're going to have to put these together. Mm. There is a switch out this arm or that for that gun, mm -hmm. but fundamentally, the Rat Ogres have a million subclasses for all the different weapon types that they have. Uh, I think that's the Storm Fiends, which is the bigger version of a Rat Ogre. I think that maybe it's changed, I don't know. They, knowing Age of Sigmar, they have, you have gun and you have don't gun, and those uh -huh. are the only two options. And those are the get. two options, yeah. cool. So you don't need to be super cautious about how you build these, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but well, you're not promising yeah. anything. The only cautiousness is, do you want gun, do you not want gun? Mm -hmm. So, Well, not gun might mean more fight. It might mean more punch. Yes. It might mean more punch. Yeah, less punch gun, more punch. Punch good. Kill, kill, kill. We have the Warp Lock Jezails. Amazing. That is the thing that really got me into Skaven when I was young. It's like, that they, they, they've got a Jezail. And then you learn that Jezail actually is a historic weapon. Yep, yeah, and they got them. Uh, uh, and they got them. And it really is a two-man rifle mm. where the second man is putting the barrel over his shoulder <laughs> about 10 yards away. <laughs> it's just a massive yeah. rifle. That's how you make it more accurate. You make them way I longer. Think it's, I, think it's, I think it's traditionally an Afghan weapon. And okay. they're for hill people like the Pathans, who are going to need to shoot things that are really far mm. away from high up. Mm -hmm. Um, it's designed for that kind of environment. As a model, then, got the sprue over oh, sorry, there. Yeah. I assume it's this one. It looks very. Uh, nice. I can see a four inch long, right? That is at least four inches long, isn't it? All the way from base to tip. About three, uh, three and a bit inches. And uh, just nice. the gun, three, yeah. maybe. It's and there's the length of one of these bases. Four of <laughs> them. More than the length of one of these bases. Yes. So if you've seen the like the Adeptus Mechanicus one, you're thinking that's kind of all right. This is way bigger. There should be three. There or the amazingly three. named Transuranic Aquabus. What, whatever they oh. call it. There is a Gisele Great in that. Name. But this is at least twice as long. Yeah, it's pretty this big. This is way bigger. So we got... Is it because one of them is different? Is it again, is it a sergeant model? Because we have the option. Choose your option. Four. Yeah, there's a double barrel one and a single barrel one. There's one double barreled one, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, that's the difference. So you've got, you've got some options on here. Again, given the fact that this makes three of them, does mm -hmm. it? Then the parts count looks pretty low. You've got two halves of a guy to shove together and then a big Giselle mm -hmm. to stick in his hand. Yeah, and then a shield and a Easy hand. money. Yeah, oh, they have a pervase. They've got the pervase, yeah. They've got the pervase, so you, you're shielded as well. Mm -hmm. it probably comes out as quite a good unit then. Almost definitely. They've, they've been historically quite good, so I don't think they're as good as the flamethrower one, but 
Which is the other thing you used to be able to get on these in, in metal kits, didn't you? Yeah. All right. Okay. So that cool. that's them. And you've still got all these kind of like these smoke ball mm -hmm. motifs mm -hmm. and things around it. The big boiler drum on the back <laughs> of them. They got that. They're very much they look skaven. Steampunk skaven. Yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. Clan rats. That is everything that's left. <laughs> Forty <laughs> of them. Fifty percent of the plastic that you get for the skaven is just these guys. Choose your variants. So these are what? Probably not much bigger than a skink. No, they're not. And these are the big guys. And, the, and these are the this is your regular backbone yeah. guy. So are they supposed to be is there forty in here? Yeah, or are there I'm, twenty? I'm pretty confident there are forty, yeah. Well there's two twenties. Is this twenty or is this ten? That's dense on the sprue for twenty. I sizes, know. Counting halves is tricky because sometimes they come in three parts. Yeah. Uh, so while he looks up at that, we have two banners on here quite with the traditional quickly. triangular mm -hmm. design. Because uh, Skaven do love that. You've got the very spiky looking Skaven shields. Some of them a little bit armoured. Some of them less so. I think that's the sergeant options. There's only two that are armoured. So Storm Vermin are generally armoured and then Clan Rats are hot. Yeah. Oh, so you think the, the maybe one in ten of them is armoured? Looking at the instructions, yeah. You use half of the armoured body for a Clan Rat if you want a unit of 20 rather than a unit of 10 and a unit of 10. So you can either do two 10s mm -hmm. or a unit of 20. So you can create two sergeants out of the box uh -huh. or you can create a Clan Rat and a sergeant. Right, which is what makes you think this sprue. If you look on the next page, it show you everything completed. Are there twenty? Are there forty clan rats? There? Yeah. Or are there? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there are there are twenty on here. It's without building them, without coming, because sometimes these things they look like body halves, but they're actually body thirds mm. or something. And um, is it too carefully? There's loads of options. There it's are. Very cool. So they've had to be quite careful that they can make two tens or a twenty out of this. Mm. So there's quite a lot of options, like the double. Which is cool because, you, like you said, you have to be careful that you don't make 40 models and that they all look like four of the same yeah, thing absolutely. <laughs> over and over again. And, so. and a unit, if you have got 20 unique models mm. here, which yeah. I think you have looking at, I mean... You both know, units can have a different musician, they can both have a different standard bearer because there's two on of the sprue, two different yeah, musicians, two different absolutely. standard bearers. And then you can have, I think there's only one sergeant model, but the interesting thing about that is that there's three different heads for the sergeant. So you can have it Clan Pestilence, Clan Eshin, or just standard, standard Verminous. Yeah, yeah. And so, and, and so within that uh, example, you kind of want the sergeant to be able to be picked out from the group. Yeah, definitely. Because he is different, they potentially, different. depending on the rules version. Yeah. Um, so the fact that you know which look, model you're looking for. They're very this. <laughs> what, all <laughs> of the rats? The oh, yeah. <laughs> the, the sergeant, sergeant is very this. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So they're, they're all very hunched over. I mean, it looks like no two models the same in a, in a 20 man unit. Uh, no, they're almost definitely not. No. Which, compared Amazing. to how your kind of old world armies looked, mm. where you kind of had Surrey ranks, and that looks good for some armies. You know, when you see like dwarves or whatever, they're all like identical, facing the same way, with the same ginger beard as everybody <laughs> else, the regimental mm. beard. Okay, I could see them doing that. But with Skaven, you yeah, want that variety. Yeah, definitely. And then being monopoles, they're not just variations of the arm mm. being slightly up or down or the head tilted. The body positions are genuinely, some of them quite stooped, some yeah. of them lungy. Some of them are chubby. Now, trying to rank these up probably would be a nightmare, but Sigmar yeah. is playing on round basis. Mm -hmm. So that is not that is a non-issue for you. I do wonder if they've tried. What, to rank them up? Because the Skaven are going to be in the old world as well. And yes. They don't look like they massively overhang the bases in comparison to some other models. Mm, I'm not so sure. About some that. of them are a bit like it's like the stabby guys from the ghosts, but some of them are pretty well within the realms of their base. But they know. fit on a 20 mil base. Yeah, exactly. Maybe. I mean, they're quite small models, but they look they're quite lungy they and they're quite stoopy. Yeah. Oh, looking at them there rather than looking at them in the book. Yeah, actually, like, here, all over like the place. you're leaning into the next base yeah. with that. You probably do. You could probably get it to work. Um, fantastic that you've got that because sometimes with some of these launch boxes, you get you come to a unit like this and they they, they give you ten of them. Mm. You're like, not 40. No, if I'm playing 40. Skaven, I need lots of clan rats. Mm. 
So they've, you know, they've shoved 20 of them on a sprue and given you two of them. Done it again. You're going to get a lot of pan rats, dude. It's fine. What we have left is the... Scenery. Scenery. Which the box described as terrain something or other. Yeah, it does. might be... Four terrain features. Terrain features. Right. So what... I think it's calling it terrain features because it's not claiming that they're all pieces of terrain because I think it's two walls and two, like, lumps. Yeah. It's, this is very much your uh, Made in China sprue as well. Yeah. So that's a bit different because it, it doesn't have the additional framing and mm -hmm. it's a slightly different plastic than all the rest yeah, of the plastic. Yeah, different colour, slightly different yeah. weight. That's cool. Um, and what you tend to find with this stuff as you're cutting it off is it's it's a harder plastic. Yeah. It's going to leave behind bigger lumps. Mm -hmm. There's a bit more filing to do. And that was certainly the case with um, the last chunk of scenery that we did, uh, which I think was the Warcry one with the right. vampires oh, okay. and Sigma. Right? So yeah. I did that one. That's around it, kicking around somewhere <laughs> we played. It's yeah. nice scenery. It's very, very well detailed. Um, it, it doesn't have quite the soft edges that you tend to get with the scenery pieces that they've done for a little while. Like, they feel like they're lower quality, but like you can kind of look at them and see that they're lower quality. Do you like, think I that these? Not this one. No. <laughs> but I have done previously. No. I love the fact that it's very scaven, mm. this scenery. It's like, in this story, or this box set, the, the, the um, Stormcast have clearly come to Skavenland. Yeah, this is Stormcast scenery in the grand i think because it's still got the helmets and the faces and the bodies like it, it looks less but it's like been this scavenized. Is, yeah so this is stormcast that's been scavenized and then taken back again <laughs> right <laughs> the feel i get okay but um the scratches in all the walls yeah. so this is going to paint up really well really because there's so much detail on here mm. Uh, even the team, like on the ones of the example on the back, is basically just like some basic colours and some washes, <laughs> and then a little edge yeah, highlighting. Absolutely, it looks great. Um, and there's there's a decent lump of weight to it, and mm -hmm. I think it's it's that classic piece of basic war game scenery. It's a, it's two L shaped walls, yeah. and then two <laughs> sort of lumps, and junk lying around, <laughs> yeah. which you know make make for objectives or whatever. Yeah, uh, where the lumps are. Scatter scenery is the term mm -hmm. I was looking for. But this is from a Griffhound, you think? Well, this is oh, just a Stormcast right. Eternal. A statue of? A statue of that's fallen down. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. the bells have been hung in there, and the door here has got the face from Stormcast Eternals. Right. And it looks like it's Stormcast scenery. And, and then, all the script and everything that's written in it, it's yeah. very Stormcast coded, but it's also but been then scratched the over. And like and graffiti graffiti yeah. in it and scratched it up. Yeah. It's really nice because they could have just given you some pretty generic walls. They're really good. But these are very flavoursome. Yeah, definitely. Um, but you would need like 10 of these to make Skavenville. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's more like Skaven was here rather Skaven than Skaven was live here. Yeah. Uh, I, we should be able to match it up with the um, scenery that I've got, the stuff that we used for Warcry a little while back. But that's all white and beautiful. Yeah, it is. I mean, this is going to be all covered in Skaven piss. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> I, I, then I might piss up my old scenery. <laughs> <laughs> so, we are going to take a short break, Definitely. and we will be right back. We're back! So, Fire and Jade. Yeah. Yep. So, we, we read, we, we, we've been and had lunch. We have. Late lunch. We've sat in a garden Lovely. and uh, read the words. Cool. We're excited about this. Yes. Aren't we? I really like the look of this. Um, I think I don't know enough about Age of, Age of Sigma that I'm not just looking at it like Combat Patrol and thinking, oh, that's the game I like, but with less. Right. I'm looking at this as a brand new game that I've never played as before, and I'm quite excited before. to play it. So if I'm nervous about it, is that when Combat Patrol came around, you know, because I work in a school, I said to the kids, all right, this is the new format for the smaller game. Mm. I want you to learn to play this game. We started playing it, and the boys were very quickly saying, so I don't want to play this. Mm. It was very badly unbalanced. Now they'd said, you know, not all the boxes are going to have an equal number of points in it mm -hmm. or the right kind of balance. So we're going to mix around with the special rules yep. to make them better. And it just didn't work. And in fact, Wooly Mike went to an event right. where it was for new people and he just took some Space Marines along because he hadn't played 40k since, mm. you know, the noughties. <laughs> And he just got ruffle stomped yeah. in turn two. He didn't have any models left. Uh -huh. Now, they've had the experience of Combat Patrol. Uh -huh. Let's hope that they've learned the right lessons from that. And like, this can be a good game. Yeah. But those kind of extra abilities and so forth, those changes, 
So you need to lean into them quite hard. Yeah. They need to be big for armies that are un underpowered. They still do look quite a lot like star collecting boxes. Because they are star collecting yeah, boxes. Yeah, I'd imagine that they, these are the star or constituent parts of a star or collecting what, box. Yeah, or what will be. Because yeah. we've seen of this box, we mm -hmm. can talk about with the. There's two armies in here. There's two armies in the box, yeah. but there are four armies in here, and it can make both by the looks of things. Uh, no, it can't make both. So one of them is a traditional army. So this is this is the old um, Indraster. This is the old, not star collecting box, but like the starter army, right, from the old box, making making up the um, the other Stormcast Eternal faction, mm. um, and the other Skaven, I guess, is an older box as well, wherever that was. So for oh, this, from out of this box, you will be using the Lord Veritant, three Prosecutors, and five Liberators. Mm -hmm. That will be the Stormcast Army. You get army, you get army rules. You get unit special rules, and they're all on the data cards. And you get exact numbers in this book. So this isn't just a code. This is like. The all of the armies mm. available in it. Yeah, everything, all the cards. Um, you found the yeah. the Skaven one. So the the Skaven claw pack, the Northeast mm. claw pack. Apologies, is all models from this box. And then if you look at the other one, I think it's the current start collecting box for Skaven. Stormfields, and, warp lightning cannon, and twenty clan rats. Yes, yeah, I would argue this is a better box than the other one, without even having played it. Okay, because this is this is a similar number of models. Right? Yeah. But doesn't come with a giant cannon and three dudes who can just shoot the hell out of anything. These have got rat ogres. Yeah, but these are stronger rat ogres. Oh, <laughs> right, okay. This has the advantage of having Ooh. a better character. Right. But this one's led by the same character who's also in this box and then everything else is better. Right, right, okay. Um, so, it, it obviously it plays out, we, we've had a look, it plays... It plays out like Age of Sigma, mm. so it's like Warhammer 40k, but with the hero phase. Yep. But then you have these cards, um, and they've got these symbols, and we didn't know what they were. We now do know, because we've had a read of the book. Do we? Yeah, it's the... It's the because <laughs> Sigmar's run... Um, Age of Sigmar's across several planes. Yes. The green ones are from the plane of life. Okay. And the red ones are from the plane of fire. That's the one. Asher and... Brimful, yeah. whatever they're And depending called. on which one you use, you're going to take these twist cards and you're going to get one a turn. Cool. Yes. All right? And that's interesting because these twist cards mix up that turn. That the change round. situation, that battle round. So this one, I'm just looking at blood marked. Uh, the underdog picks one unit for, in each player's army that is on the battlefield to be blood marked. If there is no underdog, the player picks one en enemy unit from the battlefield to be blood marked, starting with the active player. Each player scores one extra victory point at the end of the battle round if an enemy blood marked unit is destroyed. So, are they all are they all parallel? Like not parallel, um, equal on both sides. Like for that one, it was if there's an underdog, they get ahead, but both yeah. people still have a, something to do. Yeah. So this next one, each player scores one extra victory point at the end of their turn for each enemy unit destroyed that turn. Each enemy. Each enemy, yeah. And then this one, the underdog picks one objective on the battlefield. Oh, very cool. Okay. Uh, that objective is no longer controlled by either player and cannot be contested or controlled. Fine. So these are not twists for the game. They are a new twist each turn. These ones for the fire plane and these ones for the life plane. Right. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Meaning that they've got plenty of space for expansion. Meaning they've got plenty of space for expansion. You then have these battle tactics cards. Now, it did say something about having a set each, and I'm wondering if we have two sets here. <laughs> Probably. That's the first front card for both. Yeah, okay, we've got one each. Yes, right, so we need to keep these separate. Okay, cool. So, they have uh, symbols on the back. No. Cool. So this is a deck of cards which you have a hand of. You draw three cards. Those three cards. You're shuffling yours just to, so we can't double check. Um, <laughs> and these are interesting because there's two elements to it. Right. Oh, so yeah. one is a scoring element and one is an ability. Mm -hmm. So uh, you complete this battle tactic. If you complete 
Now, you complete this battle tactic at the end of your turn if there are any friendly, friendly units within three inches of the long battlefield edge. Okay. Now, I've got a model within three inches of a long edge. I gain a victory point. Nice. If I don't do that, or I don't think I can do that, I can use the other thing on the same card. Mm -hmm. this, so this is an either-or thing. Inspiring Presence. Declare, pick a friendly hero, effect, roll a dice. For the rest of this turn, add the number rolled to the command score of that hero. Mm -hmm. Right? So the, the, they're dual-use cards. Yeah. You might be able to score the victory points. At the beginning of your turn, you discard as many of these want you want to draw up to three. Mm -hmm. Each of you has a hand of these, and it looks like there was enough for one each, Certainly. which is fantastic. So I really like cards <laughs> in a modern skirmish type game yeah. because I think they mess with the meta, they really mix things up, um, and you have this underdog principle. So do you know how that works? Not in the slightest. No. Give us a minute. We referenced the underdog a few times. We looked it up. If you start the turn on the lowest number of points, you're the underdog. If you start the battle round. Not your turn. Not your turn. If you start the pair of turns at yeah. the lowest points, you Which remain the underdog the battle for both. Round. Yeah. Right. Okay, cool. Cool. But that seemed to matter a lot with these cards. Yes, it does. So again, they can, they can really make I like catch-up options. Definitely, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, I like it's It's very objective-driven, I think. We, you know, we didn't go through, through the missions and so forth no. uh, in detail. So the game was still needing to paint almost thirty models to play that that get that spearhead version yes. of the game, but unlike um, with Combat Patrol from Warhammer, there was a full breakdown of armies in that book. Mm -hmm. But also, that book is not called Spearhead; it's called Spearhead Fire and Jade. There's every reason to believe there are other realms. Yeah, and that, the, there'll be expansions and that they can seasons, learn. They can learn from this yeah. and produce a new book with a new set of armies in it. Is it worth for the benefit of the people at home? Just going through which armies because uh, there was quite a few in there. I was surprised right. to see. Is there a contents page? Who yeah. we got? It's, it's most of the factions, including some some. Ex which factions can you play? In them all. All of them. I think so. I can't see any of them. There's, no, there's no factions that are not there. I don't think so. Well, everyone's got to start collecting blocks. I mean, they're, they're un, uneven numbers of faction possibilities, partly because the Stormcast get to and the Skaven get to, but also because there's less death than most other armies, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I and don't immediately see any armor that's been Vampire counts in fact, are not in Sigma? No, they're not a thing anymore. Oh, boo! Uh, well, they're um, Soul Blight Grave Lords now, I think. Yeah, Soul Blight Grave Lords. That's skeletons and vampires together. But it's not Manfred Con von Karstein. I think the von Karsteins are still about. Yeah? I don't think Manfred and Isabella are still there. Right. Not Vlad and Isabella or Manfred, but I think one yeah. of the von Karsteins are still floating around. I can't see any that are immediately missing. In fact, I'm kind of surprised to see some of them here. <laughs> no, that's what I, that's what I was <laughs> yeah. meaning, that when you saw... Sons of Behemoth, like... the giants. That yeah. that seems horribly unfair. There's a meta in there. <laughs> so obviously you're going you're going to take away the uh, liberators and etc. Stormcast, yeah. Because you like the smaller painting requirements I associated do like with painting that. Painting gold. I think I think <laughs> you were, my thing. You like painting a small number of models, really a small do. number of colors, James. <laughs> that is fact, and they look good in a small, just Thanks. like that. And I'm going to paint thirty Skaven. Is that right? Kill kill. Forty of what's left. <laughs> yeah. In terms of in terms of spearhead, then which I, I'm genuinely quite excited about. It's it not cool. the cards mean it's not just a budget version of the game. Yes, they've added things to it to reflect the small yep. size, the low model count. I love having thirty model armies that are kind of finished. You know. Yeah. So what will be your second choice in that, James? In this book, in this, if book, I had to play another force, another force, um, goblins. Goblins. Yeah, goblins. Goblins, moon on a stick, goblins. I'd love the moon on a stick. I'd love to play some gloom spike gits. I've wanted an excuse to paint some trolls for years. And I also... You've got a troll from... already own some of these models. <laughs> <laughs> You've already got some of these. You've got this, the new squig hopper when they came out. Yeah. 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 And you what? get the moon on a stick. You get the moon on a stick. The loon boss. The loon boss. You what do you think? Moon. What do you got? Ah, what do you want? Not it's... what do you own? What do you want to play? <laughs> yeah. Um, probably goblins. Goblins. <laughs> goblins are fun. Uh, they are. I'd play flesh eater courts as well. You, I definitely would have gone for old old world. You know, Manfred and Vlad. Mm -hmm. I could have gone for that. I'm not liking the red look. Oh no, of but, the crimson oh, court. Yeah, they're very red. You don't have to paint them red. They're very. You, you know, it's like for me. 
I spent too much time hanging around with goths at university. <laughs> they need to be in black velvet, all right? Yeah. Otherwise, they're not actual vampires. That's up to you. Mm. You've got your own paintbrushes. I've got my own paintbrushes. Oh, yeah. them. They're very red. Love Knights vampire They're Lord. very red. Vargeists, because apparently they're not in... No, they're red as well. Cults anymore. <sighs> kind of something else. Yes, something skele else. What, what? skeletons. Yeah, that's a good look. I did know, and then it just went out of my head. I, I realised as <laughs> you were saying it, you were going to ask me. I know what it is. Oh, you want to play the yeah, the steampunk dwarves, Caradron overlords. I want to play the steampunk space dwarves. You get a frigate. Because you get a ship. You get a whole last frigate. You get a man with a brass balloon. <laughs> you get three men with brass balloons. How cool is that? That's amazing. And, and in that one, one, two, three, that's only 14 figures. One of them is a ship. One though, of them is a ship. With though. multiple crew figures. And most of them don't have skin. <laughs> most of them don't have skin. Yeah, that would speed up a lot. But they're all in here. Yeah. We're excited by Spearhead. Glad to see it's more than just. Mm -hmm. You know, a, a, a set of a set of rules saying mm, just play for objectives and only play with a quarter of the many, many figures. I think it could be a viable game in and of itself, mm -hmm. which I don't think Combat Patrol was. If you're interested in these sort of these armies, these clan rats are great. They are. They're just the fact that there are twenty different sculpts of clan rats. Because I imagine if you're serious about it, you might need a hundred, yeah. hundred fifty <laughs> of these guys. Uh -huh. You want them to look not all look the same. Raug has been a bit weedy. Yeah, I don't know. Was that, was that, your, low, was that your low point of the that kit? That was my low point of the kit. Low so the, the uh, claw boss on Gnaw Beast. Yes. I'm going to hope Norn right. Claw. Norn Claw on the Horn Beast. Yeah, they look good. Amazing model. There's so many really cool models in there. I'm mm. just, I don't know. They're, they've let me down on the Rat Ogre. <laughs> let you down a bit but, on Rat Ogre. But every other model in this box is amazing. The new aesthetic for the Sigmarites you like, don't you? I do. Yeah, they're, they're they've had they look a bit more, a bit more gritty. Slimmed them down, a little yeah. bit edgier. Yeah, they're, they're a lot less Suit striding. <laughs> yeah, it's like gusset ripping <laughs> poses. Um, and the, and the new kind of crow raven yeah. look. I like that. Crow makes them look, look meaner. Yeah. You like the wings a lot. I love those wings. Yeah. You like the wings. There's not many tactical rocks here for those of you that like to use like clear bases and so forth. Except there was the some. <laughs> The Skaven have entire tactical bases. <laughs> yes, yes. But it wasn't like every hero was no. standing on a rock, which is a real problem for people who like clear bases and mm. things. I think it's good. By Games Workshop standards, please. Not by anybody else's standards, but Games yeah. Workshop standards, cracking value. By anybody else's standards, it's still not much more than the pounder figure if you no. buy it from a third-party retailer. You get your rules, you get your tokens. Very surprisingly, though, you don't get any dice. There were no additional accessories except from the weird little ruler. The weird little ruler, which is on sprue yeah. with the with the scenery, yeah. And I think we're going to see this scenery thing repeated. Yeah, this is going to be in the starter boxes. Well, this is the starter box plus an extra couple characters, most yes. likely. This is the ultimate starter set, or whatever they decide to call yes. it. Yes, what, whatever they go with with That's that one. I think we're going to see that again. Yeah. That little ruler, are you going to give it a go? The rat ruler? <sighs> I don't know. I'm fine with a tape measure. I'm I don't really know what it is with people like proprietary measure. widgets. Yeah, I, I think if you want to, if you want to measure four inches, you're gonna have to think about it every time. Yeah, unless you paint a four on it. The question <laughs> is, is there is there a four inch measurement ever relevant? Maybe not. Because you know what this reminds me of is when I was young. Yeah. When we used to play like historical games with fifteen mil mm -hmm. Napoleonics. People would arrive at the War Games Club with a bundle of painted dowels under their arm. <laughs> yeah. This is the artillery range uh -huh. stick. This is the carbine range stick. This is That's the so musket trusting. range stick. I would have asked to measure them. Yes, you know, they've measure. done it right. I you know they've done it right. <laughs> that doesn't look yeah. quite the same way for Zorn. And using. that's kind of, kind of you know, like right. going back, because it wasn't fundamentally a bad idea. One of my formative experiences of playing Age of Sigma was I went to Warhammer World and I played for someone and I was like, I'm going to play all my demons. I want to play my corn demons and my Nurgle demons, both at the same time. And I had every single different movement increment from 4 inches to 12 inches. As a separate gauge? Uh, no, 4 to 14, somewhere in my movement during my army. And I, I, this was still during, like, 7th edition and I was like, I don't want to play this game anymore. Right. I don't want to have to remember the movement distance for every single thing that oh, I use. Oh, because it wasn't like everything moved 6 back then. No, no, no. no. For, for Age of Sigmar changed it and like some things move 4, some move 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 and I yeah. had like 20 units on the board. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's still that way but I think less egregious. What I mean is something's going to be moving 4. Yes. <laughs> 
Yeah, and you're gonna have to count them out. Yeah. Right. That was that was our release. From what we've seen of it, pretty excited about it. Yeah. Hope it was useful for you because we've been rabbiting on. Yeah. So thank you for watching. Bye bye. If you enjoyed what you'd seen, why don't you come check us out on modelingforadvantage.co.uk. There's loads of different ways you can support the channel over there, including merch, that kind of stuff.